So good morning, just. Um, these, these are challenging times, aren't they? Yeah? And, uh, and I think there's uh, no greater challenge that we face, uh, not just as a country, um, but as, uh, as a global community than, than climate change. Um, climate change is going to affect us all in lots of different ways. And in some times, it's really hard to get a context or an understanding for how big an effect climate change will have. But for Northern Europe, uh, instead of global warming, climate change could tip us into uh, a next ice age. So this is really important that we uh, meet this challenge head on. And that challenge will involve how we think about uh, how we consume and how we generate energy and electricity. Uh, and I would like to think that uh, uh, this, this technology here that you see behind, uh, behind me has a real role to play as we try to, in an accelerated way, redevelop how we generate electricity and energy in, in the UK. Now, before we think about the future, let's think about the past. So how did we get to uh, the present state where we're in now, which uh, you'll realize uh, is something of a mess? Uh, what we see here is the electricity production for the United Kingdom going back to the 1970s up to close to the modern age. Uh, and it's broken down by technology. You see there's coal, and that's this purple color. Around the, the 1990s, we had a lot of gas generation. And then up the top here, we have in, in yellow and these other colors, we have nuclear, that's the yellow, and renewables. And you see that about 80%, 75%, 80% of the electricity production in the UK is by coal and gas. And these are great generators of car carbon dioxide, greenhouse gas. And the challenge that we have as a country is to reduce essentially all of this down to zero. And we've got to, of course, to compensate, uh, increase this fraction here to 100%. So how on earth are we going to do that on a time frame which, as I said, is highly accelerated? Now, um, that is an average over a year, each of those uh, uh, that, uh, bins in that plot. This is uh, instantaneously what's happening. And I've got two snapshots here, one from January 2014, one from September. And uh, you won't be able to read the scale here, but you can see that these are uh, averaged uh, or uh, um, generation over 24 hour period, you can see it fluctuates through day and night. It broken down again into the technologies, coal, gas, nuclear, and in this case, wind. You can see wind fluctuates from one time of year to another. Okay, so that's a challenge. Uh, nuclear is a fairly steady production. It just chugs along producing typically about 15% of our electricity. And as the demand, as a, as a function of the day changes, gas power is turned on and off, uh, as is to some extent coal. Uh, the scale here is uh, 50 gigawatts, uh, and that's in the winter. In the, in the summer, or closer to the summer, it's down to 35 to 40 gigawatts. Okay, so that's a good scale. 50 to 40 gigawatts is how much electricity we have to produce just to keep this country going. Um, so as we think forward to how we design how we generate electricity in the, in the UK, uh, we have to think about what are the rules of the game? Um, so what are the pressures? Uh, and the pressures are, come from regulation. Uh, the UK has uh, enshrined in law through the Climate Change Act of 2008 the ambition to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from 1990 levels, so the Kyoto Agreement, to two, uh, 2050, um, so that's only 35 years away, um, a reduction by 80%, and that's in law. The other factor is, and this is, uh, comes down to energy security, security of supply, what kind of resources do we have as a country to deploy in terms of energy production? So for a long time, we've had uh, almost free power from the, from the North Sea, and that comes in the form of oil and gas. 
And you can see it again as a function of time from the 1980s through to the reasonably modern age, the production, and you can see that it's beginning to decline. And perhaps by 2030, uh, our ability to rely on that kind of resource will, will have gone. Uh, we um, already, uh, as mandated by that uh, ambition to drive down uh, CO2 emissions, are turning off coal power stations. Uh, this plot here shows where coal power stations are around the country. Uh, and you can see some really big ones. So uh, Drax, that's about four gigawatts. So that's about 10% of uh, uh, power output of the UK. Uh, there's, uh, there's some in the local region. Uh, and Didcot, which uh, this one here includes both the gas and coal production from Didcot. You will know that Didcot uh, A turned itself off, well, was turned off um, uh, earlier uh, this uh, uh, earlier in 2014. So there's a lot of power here. A, if you add this up, there's about 10 to 12 gigawatts of power, and that is a significant fraction of our electricity production in the UK, and that will be turned off um, rather shortly. Now, so you can see the, the challenge that we have, and uh, now I want to think through what the solutions to that challenge might be. Uh, and what I've got here is a fantastic plot which comes from uh, David Kay's book, Sustainable Energy Without Hot Air, which shows uh, every dot here is a country in the world. And what it shows is on the vertical axis here is the power consumption per person against the population density of that country. And uh, uh, just to uh, give an indicator, of uh, the world average and the European average, you can see uh, is shown there. Um, the United States sits high up on this axis, very greedy consumers of electricity per person. And uh, the UK sits over here, um, high up on the population density axis. So uh, a small island with a large population. Now, where is it good to be on this plot? Um, and uh, you might realize that if you think about this for a while, that these diagonal lines here correspond to um, power per meter squared. So power per meter squared of the land mass of the UK. So uh, what this number means here is that we need to generate one milliwatt for every meter squared of the UK, one milliwatt. Um, and we're not down there. We're actually up here that we need, would need to generate up to just over one watt per meter squared for every meter squared that exists in the UK. And the reason this is so powerful, it allows you now to think through what technologies can uh, meet that demand. So here I put some renewable technologies. And let's just take wind power, which you can see is two to three watts per meter squared. And we need to generate something like one watt per meter squared. So if we turn this into a solution, what does it look like? Well, it looks something like this. So you would need to cover half of the UK landmass in wind turbines. Now, for some people, that might be acceptable. But for many, it's not. And so what the UK has been doing is not building wind turbines on, onshore. There's, they've been doing this. They've build, been building offshore wind. And actually, we have some of the largest arrays of wind turbines in the world. So the London Array, which sits just down here, as you might expect, off London, um, is providing something like 600 megawatts of power, so a really large uh, wind turbine array. So wind will not be the whole solution. Uh, what is the solution? And uh, luckily enough, we have a, a very good committee, the Committee on Climate Change, who are thinking through the challenge. And you, you saw that we've got to meet that challenge by 2050. And they've laid out an interim scenario, which is 2030. Uh, and this is um, a target point that we have to reach in order to be on track to deliver the, um, the reduction in CO2 emissions. Um, the recipe uh, that they present, and this, this is pretty much an optimal scenario, 
is that you build renewables as fast as you can. And you, uh, that means that you could get to about 40% of renewables by 2030. Uh, you could probably get away with about 20% of gas. You would need to capture some of the CO2 coming from that gas and, uh, and store it, so that's carbon capture and storage. Uh, but the, the, the gap is that we need to build something like about 40% of new nuclear power. And at the time then we're building or need to get to about 40% of nuclear power, what's happening is that the UK is moving from about 15% of nuclear power. It's got a whole fleet of very old nuclear power stations which are gradually going to be turning, turning off. So we're actually heading towards 0% nuclear power. And that is the current strategy. Well, it was up until very recently. And now we are moving into a phase where we are building new nuclear power stations. So this is a very large scale nuclear power station which will be built down uh, in northern Somerset. This will be a 3.2 gigawatt power station. 5% uh, of the UK power output with a huge cost, 14 billion pounds, and it will take something like five years to build and probably will be producing electricity by about 2023. Now, if you think about it, uh, if we uh, want to get to 40%, and it's, uh, each one of these is 5%, and it takes five years for construction, then it's going to take us about 40 years to get to the point where we've got 40%. That is a real challenge. And so, uh, my belief is that we need to be thinking about radically new approaches. And radically new approaches means going for not large-scale nuclear power stations, but small-scale ones, small modular reactors. These, about 10% of the size of a large reactor, and they have a number of advantages. You can place them not around the coast, but you could place them in a city. Uh, you could also get over the fact that these things are very expensive to build large reactors. With a small modular reactor, you can build the first one cheaply, which then finances the next ones, which finances the next ones. And soon you get to the point where you've got enough power um, to uh, be equivalent to a large reactor. This technology has the ability to load follow. So if a demand is fluctuating, these reactors here can follow that demand, unlike large scale power nuclear power stations. They're much safer. Um, they're able to dissipate the heat. So if you have a core meltdown in a reactor, the heat can be dissipated. And you can combine this technology with other energy technologies, enhancing the efficiency. So going from about 30%, 40%, up to close to 80%. And finally, and this is the really important thing, a lot of the nuclear power stations which are going to be built in the UK are going to be built by the French, the Chinese, the Americans, the Japanese. This technology here, the UK has leadership. We build small modular reactors right now. They sit in the back of this thing here, which is a nuclear power submarine. So we have the possibility for re-establishing UK leadership in this, uh, in this technology area. So challenging times. We need radical solutions. And I think um, small modular nuclear reactors could really help kickstart um, our ability to uh, meet the climate change targets as we move forward. Thank you. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat>